in the African American context, the largest kind of proto pseudo Muslim movement was the Nation of Islam. The members of the Nation of Islam, they refer to the period of Elijah Muhammad until the leadership of Imam Warathuddin Muhammad as the first resurrection, where what they were taught wasn't really Islam. It was a lot of psychological upliftment, uh, identity, building a positive ident uh, identity. And so this was the first resurrection. And the second resurrection, Imam Warthidi Muhammad, and, and a, 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 phenom a, a, a development that is tremendously understudied. There should be myriad PhDs <clears throat> on the work of Imam Warthidi Muhammad. Because if we can accept that what the nation of Islam was teaching was not Islam, that uh, W.D. Farrar or Fard Muhammad appeared as a law in Detroit, Michigan in 1930 to bring Islam to the black man in America, that doesn't sound like Islamic belief. Or, or that, and, and Elijah Muhammad was the messenger of Allah to the black man in America after the Prophet وسلم, that it had its place. I'm not trying to, as the young people might say, hate on the nation of Islam. I'm trying to make a point. And that point is, and uh, you know, the, the white race was grafted on the island of Patmos in the Mediterranean Sea by a big head black doctor named Dr. Yaqub. So if you can accept that's not Islam per se, then Imam Warthidi Muhammad bring half a million people out of that movement into Islam. And uh, the Nation of Islam, uh, our fast is December because the days are short and cool. So it's a baby fast for a baby nation. Imam Warthidi Muhammad brought the members of that, many of them, half a million into fasting Ramadan. Half a million into La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Half a million from praying like facing the east and praying like this to putting their head on the ground and making prostration to Allah five times a day, the salat as we know it. Make a change in the pilgrimage from Chicago, Illinois to attend Savior's Day to going to Mecca. So Imam Warafidin Muhammad, in my estimation, orchestrated the greatest single act of mass conversion in human history within a couple of years. That's part of our history, and that's something we should, we should study and try to understand how did he do that. Underappreciated. 